It's time for last week. Dr. McReynolds. No, she's busy. What do you mean she's busy? Okay, I'll do it. It's time for last with Mr. Thomas. Chapter 9, lesson at number 6, Volumes of Solids of Revolution 2, Around the Y-Axis. Now in the last lesson we were taking our enclosed area between the curve and the x-axis and rotating it 360 degrees around the x-axis to get a solid shape. However, what we can do is also rotate that area around the y-axis. Yes, we can. So if we rotate that right the way around, we would end up with a solid shape. And if we rotate this area around, it would look something like that. So you can see we end up with a cone if we're rotating that around. If this is the case, what we do is we change our formula slightly. So the way we work out the volume is still by multiplying by pi, you still need to remember to do that. We're still going to be integrating between a and b, but in the last lesson what we had was y squared, and y was written in terms of x, and we just worked out y squared. This time though, what we're doing is we're integrating x squared. And because x is going to be written in terms of y, we need to do that. First of all, your x squared will also be in terms of y. So you will integrate with respect to y. Let's look at some examples. So example one, find the volume of the solid formed when the shaded region is rotated through 360 degrees about the y-axis. So imagine if you're rotating that right the way around. If we do that then, well, we know we've got this formula. It's still pi times the integral of your x squared dy. But because our curve has this equation here, y equals, well, we need to rearrange that. We need to find out what x is equal to. Or, even better, find out what x squared is equal to. So the first thing we need to do is rearrange y equals the square root of x plus 1 into the form of x squared equals. To do that, where do you go first, Callum? Brilliant, square both sides. After that, what do you do? Brilliant, you subtract one from both sides. So I'm just rewriting it back to front. And then subtract one from both sides. After that, because we've got x equals, well, in this equation here is x squared. So we can just work out x squared easily enough. All we're doing is taking the right-hand side and squaring it. The same as last lesson, what it would do is rather than put pi times the integral of the y squared take away one all squared in here, Ignore pi just now and just work out the integral of whatever the x squared is. So if we do that, we're going to have the integral of y squared take away 1 all squared between 2 and 1. And again, because it's just squared, what you'd probably do is just multiply out the bracket. So imagine it as y squared take away 1 bracket y squared take away 1. If you multiply that out, you get y to the power of 4 take away 2y squared plus 1. You know from there, what you do is you add 1 to the power, then you divide, really you're integrating, you've been doing that for years, and then once you're at that stage, sub in the 2, then minus, and sub in the 1. Start to work that out, if you work out this bracket here, you could just use a calculator for that, or if you're quite confident, just do it in your head, or with pencil and paper at the side, you end up with 3 and 1 15th. This bracket here becomes 8 15th if you work that out. From there then, if you've got 3 and 1 15th, take away 8 15ths, that works out to be 2 and 8 15ths. I'm going to write that as a top heavy fraction, so 2 times 15, add on 8 gives you 38 15ths. And the reason I'm doing that is all I've got to do after that is put a pi beside it, and that will be the volume. So once you get to that stage, just remember you need to take the integral of your x squared and multiply by pi. So that will give us an answer of... 38 pi over 15, and what would you have in the end? Good cubic units, because it's a volume that you have. Example 2, the area bound by the curve y equals x cubed, woo, the y-axis, woo, and y equals 1, boop, and y equals 8, boop, is rotated through 360 degrees about the y-axis. Find the volume of the solid of revolution generated. So once again, what's the first thing that we need? Well, if you look at this formula here, you can see that you're integrating x squared. So we need to rewrite this as x squared equals. So the first thing we're doing is rewriting y equals x cubed as x squared equals. In order to do that, anybody have any suggestions? Perfect. What you would do first of all is just get x equals. So in order to go from x cubed back to x, you would take the cube root of both sides. 
So if you take the cube root of both sides, you would end up with x equals, and it would be the cube root of y. Or if you write it as an index, it would be y to the power of one third. That's what x is. We want to get x squared, so now we square that. So to square that, where we're going to square the right-hand side as well, so we've got y to the power of one third, all squared. If you're squaring that, well, it's y to the power of a third times y to the power of a third. You can add the indices together, or you could just do one third times two. Either way, x squared works out to be y to the power of two thirds. That is what x squared is equal to. The same as the other examples. I'm going to ignore pi just now and just work out the integral between a and b. a and b in this case are 1 and 8. So we're going to be integrating the x squared, or in other words, y to the power of 2 thirds, between 1 and 8. So doing that just on the other page, here we go. So we're integrating between 1 and 8, y to the power of 2 thirds. You know from there, to do that, you would add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So we'd have y to the power of 5 thirds, divide did by 5 thirds. Remember, when you divide by 5 thirds, you can flip that upside down and you can multiply by the 3 fifths. Therefore, you can sub in the 8 and sub in the 1, so it's going to be 3 fifths of 8 to the power of 5 thirds. Take away 3 fifths of 1 to the power of 5 thirds. If you work that out, 8 to the power of 5 thirds multiplied by 3 fifths gives you 96 over 5. And then if you work out 1 to the power of 5 thirds, well, that's just 1, multiply that by 3 fifths, it stays as 3 fifths. Therefore, 96 take away 3 gives you 93 fifths, and that there is what you get for the integral of x squared. Just remember, though, we are wanting the volume, and to get the volume, we've still to multiply by pi. So it's going to be pi times the 93 fifths, giving us an answer of 93 pi over 5 cubic units. Woo! Have a go at these questions. It's the Unit 2 booklet, page 64. Check your answers as you go. You're working out the volume of a solid of revolution that is rotated around the y-axis 360 degrees. Best of luck. See ya.